Hello, and welcome to Love, Light, and Healing with Colette Lopane Capella. I am Colette Lopane Capella, licensed mental health counselor and founder and director of New Day Vitality. I am so excited to have this show and to bring it to our viewers and our community. It's very exciting. It sort of has changed over time, and now we're online, but it's still a wonderful experience for me, and I hope for my viewers as well. Each episode, we will have a special guest on who is going to share information, love, and their soul. So today, our special guest is Lindsay Goldstein Hawks, LCSW of Silver Lining Therapy. Welcome. Hi, Colette. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So we're going to jump right in. Um, can you tell the viewers a little bit about you and what you do and how you decided to become a therapist? The golden question. Absolutely. So um, being my own in my own practice and being a therapist has always been something that I have dreamt of. It's been a conversation with my family, um, with myself, with my with my, with my husband, um, it sort of just transpired. You know, when you're little, you kind of play in and lean into your, you know, your strengths and your positive things that you bring to relationships, but you don't have the language as to what that would mean in the future. Yeah. Um, as I got older, it just sort of took this snowball effect where I picked a major at a, a random college learned a little bit more about that. And then it kind of shifted and, and went from there. Um, and then, you know, during COVID is when it really um, took off for me. So that's when I made the final jump to open my practice. And it's been a whirlwind ever since. <laughs> and I think it's awesome. I have to ask you this question. How did you come up with a name for your practice? Because it's just such an awesome name. Thank you so much. So obviously during COVID, everyone had a mixed experience. Um, and when I started the thought of, you know, I think I can do this, I, I think I'm ready. Um, I started to, you know, survey my friends and my family. And I was like, what would be a catchy name? Like, you know, I need something that kind of jumps out. So everyone was like, well, use your name. Your, your name is hyphenated, it's long already. And I was like, no, I want something a little bit different. Um, so it really took a lot of help from family and friends. And then one day someone was like, you know, the silver lining of life is, and I was like, that's it. It's perfect. Okay. Um, yes. um, it, it kind of went from there. I love it. I love it. The yeah. first time I saw it too, it popped at me and I was like, mm, I mm -hmm. like it. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So thank you for sharing. So you mentioned when you went to school, so where did you go to school and tell me a little bit about schooling and your background there? Absolutely. So I went to the university of New Hampshire. Um, I'm born and raised in Jersey, but I have always loved New Hampshire. I went to summer camp in New Hampshire, um, and then I decided to go to school there as well. Um, at that school, I made some of my very best friends who I still talk to today, um, and I chose a major called family studies. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, and a lot of people say, what does that mean? Like, how did family studies transfer over into being a therapist? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm the oldest of four, and, and birth order really always fascinated me, and that's really all it took to pick my major. Um, after school, I was, you know, deciding what to do. Um, and I decided I needed a little bit more direction. So I then went to New York University, um, where I chose the degree of uh, social work. Um, and that's sort of my educational journey. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. And what jobs have you had as a therapist in your, in your, sometimes I call it a past life, but in your past. Yeah. So I was really lucky. Um, in graduate school, I had wonderful supervisors um, and I was always in school settings. So I was in a high school at one point and then I was also in a college setting. Um, and that's where my love for adolescence really took off. So um, a lot of my experience has been in schools. Um, my first job, however, was um, at Big Brother Big Sister. And that's actually where I met my husband. Um, so we have a, a special bond over um, just sort of helping others and volunteering and, and things like that. Um, and then after that, I've worked in some partial hospital programs, some inpatient units, um, and then really it's been some private practice in other people's practices and then all different high school experiences. Um, so I've done therapeutic high schools as well as public high schools. So I feel like from an adolescent perspective, I really see both ends um, in terms of the school systems. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I like this question here. How did your experience, this is a good question, help you as a therapist? How's my experience? So when I 
was a student, um, I had a professor once say, you know, to be a good therapist, you should be in the other chair, you know, be a client. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember looking at the professor and I was young and naive and I was like, eh, what do, what do they know? <laughs> um, and then as I got to that natural transition of graduation, being a real adult, what am I going to do? I found myself like many others questioning, you know, what's next for me? And, and I was in this state of transition. So I decided then to seek out a therapist of my own. And I have to say it was probably the best choice I ever made. Um, that therapist at the time really helped me just sort of, you know, narrow in on what I wanted to do and really help with the, the next natural steps. Um, and I really credit that experience to making me more empathetic to people that come into my office and sit in the chair. Um, and it really, I think it really has, has helped me um, really meet my clients where they are and understand their experiences a little bit better. I agree. Definitely. It's funny when you said that um, one of the clinicians at my practice, Maggie, she um, shared a video not that long ago, but she, me and her were talking and she said, I remember in grad school, the professor said, you should always be on the other end. So she said, I remember I went into the therapist's office and she said, well, what's going on? And she said, nothing at all. I'm just here because I'm supposed to do this. And she said, by the end of the session, she was hysterical crying and she yeah. was like, wow. I have a lot of work to do. I have to build a lot in my my own self-awareness. And she was like, and I'm ready. And it was very a, a very profound moment, but also a moment that she was like, I need it. And didn't even yeah. realize, like you said. Yeah. Sometimes I find the best sessions um, occur when people come in, they're like, I have nothing to talk about today. And I'm like, this is the best part. Just like, tell me life. Tell me about you. Tell me what's been going on. And it ends up becoming the most magical experience, I think, for both of us. Because they leave here and they're like, oh, wow, I, I really did have a lot to talk about. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so I, I like this question as well. Um, what made you decide to start your own practice? Like, I know you said it was sort of in the mix of COVID and you, you were like, I can do this, I'm ready. But what really helped you make that decision? Yeah. So, um, you know, right before COVID, um, unfortunately, I, I, you know, my, my dad passed away um, and my dad was one of my biggest cheerleaders. Um, and he always, I think before I had the language of what I wanted to do, always knew what I should be doing. Um, and he used to always say, Lindsay, you know, hang up your shingle and, and you know, you'll be so successful in whatever you do, you'll be great. So um, during COVID, I had a lot of soul searching and, and a lot of thoughts going on in my head. And at that point, my kids were the ages, you know, right now they're six, nine, and almost 11. Um, and I felt like they, you know, they were in school, they were a little bit more independent, I had the work life balance a little bit better. And I just thought if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. Yeah. Um, and I'm very fortunate, I have a lot of family close by, and I have a lot of friends and um, I really feel supported in decisions that I make and knowing if I fail, they'll be there to pick me up. And even my kids were cheering me on like, mommy, you can do it. This will be great. So I feel like with that encouragement, I really decided, let's just give it a shot. The worst thing that can happen is I fail and I find another job. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I don't say that lightly because I know it's not always that easy, but I did a lot of research and, and you know, took a course um, that really actually helped figure out like the minutia behind the scenes. And yeah. then you know, at one point for about six to eight months, I was working two jobs. Um, so I was home even less, but then I decided to go full force and just, you know, jump right in. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I think for all of us, we all have that story of when it was like that moment where you were like, okay, you got to jump right in. Yeah. And I think that was part of like, for many that I talk, even on this show, it's like, that's their experience. Like, it's like this moment in time where everything stops and they have a choice. They either jump right in or they step back and you jumped yes. in and you're thriving. Yeah, it's been, it's been, I've been very lucky. It's been, I love it. I mean, I, I don't have, you know, really words to capture. It's just been an amazing experience. I agree. I always say it's my firstborn. It's my first baby. My practice is my first baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I get it. <laughs> it's very <laughs> so, sacred. Yeah, it's really it sacred. It is. Um, I really love this question. So how would you describe your approach as a therapist? I know we all have different approaches and tailored approaches for specific clients and what they're bringing. But how would you describe your approach as a therapist? Yeah, you know, so we, we have to market ourselves, right? I ask this question to myself constantly, like, how am I gonna sound smart? <laughs> my, my husband was like, Lindsay, you are smart. What are you talking about? And I was like, I need to 
set myself apart from other therapists? You know, how can I achieve that? Um, and I think part of that is reminding myself that we all have the education, we all have the training, we all hopefully have good supervisors that have gotten us so far, but then the rest really takes on our personality and who we are. Um, you know, I, I always remind people, I, I love to laugh. I feel like it's the best medicine and I try to bring humor into my sessions as much as possible. I also, just like anyone else, I'm a person and, you know, I struggle with my own anxieties and worries and I'm a mom and I'm a daughter and a sister and a, and a wife and, you know, we all wear those hats and I try to just bring in that very conversational, humble, down to earth approach with people. Um, you know, also true to silver lining, I do try to see the positive in things, but at the same time, I'm able to recognize that sometimes things just aren't fun at the moment. So I just try to be as real as possible. And I think that people either like that approach or they don't, but I, I've gotten good feedback so far. Yeah, I think authenticity, especially in this work that we do is, is, is the most essential piece of the puzzle, right? It's because someone's coming and bringing all their vulnerabilities and all the pieces of themselves that perhaps they've been covering or hiding for a period of time as a survival tactic. And if we're authentic and pure in that space, it gives them that opportunity to be so as well. So I love that how you're like, I'm just yeah. being well. Yeah, and you know, I always remind myself at the end of the day, you know, people are trusting me with some of their innermost thoughts and it's such a gift and I, I don't take that lightly and I try to be as present in the moment with people as possible because I do value that they chose me and that they chose to open up in those moments. Yeah, and if that's not powerful, I don't know what is, right? Exactly. exactly. Um, okay, so I want to ask you one more question, and then yeah. I want you to share with the viewers how they can get in touch with you, what your social medias are, what your website is, all that great stuff. So last question is, what is your niche? Like, how did you carve out your niche for yourself, and what specifically is your niche population? Absolutely. Um, honestly, I try... I've always worked with adolescents, so they tend to follow me. Um, I still am a relatable enough in terms of the social media apps and things like that, where I can still talk the language of a teen. Um, so I, I think just by, by nature, they follow me. But I also um, work with um, adults, really, you know, any kind of adjustment or transition in their lives. So whether it's, you know, graduation, um, change of employment, um, you know, a big life shift, um, new mom, balancing in-laws, all of that stuff that, you know, I'm living, you know, that's really my niche and, and what I, you know, gravitate to the most. So that's what I would say for myself. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So tell the viewers how they can get in touch with you, what your social media is and what your website is and all that good stuff. Absolutely. So my social media is still something I'm working on because it doesn't come as natural as it does for others. But um, my Instagram is Silver Lining Therapist. Um, and I try to post um, as much as I can, but I need to get better at it. Um, my website is also um, silverliningtherapist.com. Um, and then you can find me on Psychology Today. Um, I'm also paired with Alma, which is a, a, a therapy directory. So you can reach me on all of those things. Perfect. Lindsay, thank you so much for being a part of today's episode. Everything that you shared was awesome and so informative and helpful, and I'm sure for me, but as well as the viewers. And until next time, love and light. Be well, my friend. Thanks so much, Colette. Bye, everybody. Bye.